Hey everyone. Since the weather is absolute trash today, with a lot of torrential downpour, I figured I would do a video showing how I entertain my dog in the house when we can't really get outside. Alright, so our favorite game to play in the house when it's rainy outside is called the Find It Game. We use this toy, which is a toy we've had his entire life, and we use it specifically for this game. And I tell Hunter to wait in the corner. Hunter, wait. And I go find a place to hide it. So he's really good at this game. He's been playing it a very long time. Hide it right there. And then I go back and find him. Are you peeking? Okay, go find it. He goes and finds it. So this is a game he uses his nose. That toy smells unique and that's why I chose it. It's just a Oh, we found it. Good boy. Good boy. Go find it. Good boy. So when he finds it, we play tug. It was a reward. Good boy. Hunter here. Sit. Sit. Else. Good boy. Come on, let's go hide. Go hide. Forward. Sit. And wait. Find somewhere else to put. Hmm. You gotta make sure they're not peeking. This one's kinda easy. Find it. He loves this game. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Come here. Good boy. Tug. Walk him back here. Sit. No nope, more tug. Hunter, sit. Good boy. Ouse. Ouse. Thank you. Okay, come here. Go in your corner. Go hide. Forward. Sit. And wait. This one I'm going to make a little harder. Fix the bed. Find it! Ah! See, he's using his nose mostly. This one's hard. Or not. Oh, he found it. <laughs> Good boy, Hunter. Good boy, good find it. So this next activity is a favorite of mine. I got this on Amazon, it's called a snuffle mat. So it's essentially just a piece of material and then a bunch of felt pieces that you can hide food in. And the reason why I like this, leave it, leave it. 
The reason why I like this is because it allows your dog to forage for treats, which is a very natural behavior. And when we fulfill natural behaviors in our dogs, or rather allow them to fulfill natural behaviors, it's very rewarding for them. And it speaks to them on, you know, a very primitive level. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some dehydrated beef loin, <laughs> excuse you, breaking it up into little pieces, Hunter leave it, and then I tuck it into the snuffle mat. And you put them all over and kind of get them to settle in there. This is one of Hunter's favorite things to do, so he's very excited. And again, just breaking them into small pieces them in. You can even sprinkle. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's a free one. So you can sprinkle them. Now the ends are good. Leave it. And then just kind of leave it. Patience is a virtue, Hunter. If I don't have it, you at least have to have it. And then a big one right in the middle, just for fun. And you can use any kind of dry treat. And what I like about this one is that you can just toss it in the washing machine when it's starting to get yucky. Okay, Hunter. So Hunter's using his nose to figure out where the treats are, and then he has to kind of dig around for them. And he certainly finds it rewarding. And you can actually make these yourself at home. All you need is a base and some material cut into strips like this. What, are they gone already? Good boy. Another thing I really like to do with him is run through some basic obedience commands. Not only is it mentally stimulating for him just to think about what I want and execute commands in chains, but it's good to always keep up with your training, even if it's simple stuff. Training is a lifelong thing, not just 
a once and you're done situation. So I like to just sit on the floor with him and have fun. It's structured, yes, but I'm not really focused on getting precise um, obedience from him. It's more relaxed, which he knows the difference when it comes to me just sort of sitting on the floor with a toy. Um, he knows he can be a little more relaxed with stuff. Um, and I also want to mention that he is very vocal, so I apologize if the barking is loud. He's a talkative dog. German Shepherds typically are. <laughs> so, you ready, Hunter? I see you're drooling. That's very gross. Can you stay? Good boy. Can you back up? Yeah. Back. Back. Flats. Stay. Sits. Wave. Wave. Good boy. Stay. Stay. Spin. Back up. Back, 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 back. back. Flats. Stay. Spin. Sit. Slowest sit. Flats. Stay. Back up. Back up. Back. 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 Flats. Stay. Spin. Spin. Flats. Sit. Wave. Wave. No. Wave. Hunter here. Sit. Sit. Wave. And always pay your dog. Paying your dog is very important. Good boy. Okay, go get in your bed. You can get in the second bed, that's fine. <laughs> so usually when I am done going through various activities with Hunter, I'll end it by giving him a bone to chew on. Now today I just have a kangaroo tail piece. Normally I will use a raw meaty bone, but they're all frozen. I forgot to thaw one for him. So he's just going to enjoy a chunk of dried kangaroo. Okay. Now the thing about chewing is it's very therapeutic for dogs. It's a very natural, common behavior for them to have. Oh, lovely hunter. <laughs> and, uh, like I said, it's very therapeutic. It burns a lot of energy. It's good exercise for their jaws and their head and all the muscles in these regions. And it just makes them happy. It's also very good to keep help keep their teeth clean. Um, now the only thing I recommend for chewing are raw meaty bones and that's because cooked bones are very dangerous. You don't ever want to give them to a dog, whether they're small or big, never cooked bones. There are some bones that are okay dehydrated and that would include the kangaroo tailbone and that's because it's a very, very soft bone and it's mostly cartilage and there's some tendon in there and it's generally quite safe. Another dehydrated option would be duck feet or chicken feet, beef tendons, um, like beef jerky type treats, but in general what's best for them is just a raw bone. So stuff like beef marrow bones or beef knuckles, uh, neck bones, you can do raw turkey necks, duck necks, depending on the size of your dog, but they're all really good options. And raw bones are safe. Just watch your dog because some dogs, rather than chew and gnaw at a bone, will try and split a bone in half and eat it. So after you watch your dog a few times, you can tell what kind of chewer they are and what they'll be safe eating. Hunter's the type of dog that I can leave him with anything and he will safely eat it. Um, so he's been raw fed his whole life. He's had so many raw bones in his eight and a half years of life that I couldn't even estimate how much bone he's eaten. And he, he's never had a problem. He's never had any teeth breaking. 
He's never had any, you know, tears in his stomach or intestines. He's never had any impacted debris in his intestines. And that's all because he's always eaten raw bones. So, as I said, right now he's eating um, like a dried kangaroo bone. It's not cooked, it's just dried out, like dehydrated. But um, still, the best and safest bone is a raw bone. And depending on the size of the bone you give, like this will take Hunter probably like five minutes to eat. It was a small piece too, but if you give like a, bee, a big beef knuckle bone, that could last up to an hour, depending on the dog and what kind of chewer they are. And as you can see, he looks very happy. And that's because chewing, again, like I mentioned earlier, is very therapeutic. a very happy puppy face. All right, so he's almost done that. And I will close out by saying that that's usually what I do on a rainy day or a day when I'm too sick to get out of the house. Um, there's other activities I do as well, like I'll throw a softball in the house or we'll do um, exercise on my stairs that lead from downstairs to upstairs. I'll get him to walk up and down those a couple times um, and that's really good for building muscle in the shoulders and the, the hind end and again we do a lot of stuff like hiding treats around the house so he has to go forage and find them. So there's a lot of activities you can do in the house. If you need stuff that you don't have to necessarily engage with them, that's where the raw bone is fantastic. Um, I'm a little iffy about where they eat raw bones. I know some people are comfortable with letting them eat a raw bone on their bed, but I'm a bit of a clean freak, so I don't quite like that. <laughs> I'll either give a raw bone outside or on a carpet that I can vacuum and spray down right after or in a crate. Um, Hunter doesn't use a crate anymore. I only used it for training as a puppy, but I will still occasionally throw him in a crate with a bone so that just so that cleanup's easy. And uh, yeah, we'll have a nice long nap after this. Doesn't beat running, doesn't beat hiking, which is our regular exercise routine, but it's still good. And I know in the next few days, I'm going to head out and film a video about our typical exercise routine with him, which will include things like running and um, sort of physio type stuff that I do and what I do to keep him in shape and, and muscular and how much exercise I give him a day, which is probably uncommon for many people. But I'm also going to do that video this week since a lot of people are interested in how my eight-year-old, eight-and-a-half-year-old dog is so fit and so active still. So yeah, that's it. Just because it's raining or you're in quarantine or you're not feeling well doesn't mean you can't find things for your dog to do that's fulfilling and will drain energy and keep them happy. Right, Hunter? You cleaning up for me? You're a good boy.